This is Screamers. I'm running a retro con here in the fall with uh, actually there's three Thundercat voice actors right now and one of them happens to be Peter Newman. Can you say hello Peter? I can say hello Peter. <laughs> oh you mean hello to them. Yes. Yeah. Hi everybody. <laughs> yeah. And you were the voice of uh, Tigra. Uh, among others but yes Tigra. Yep. Um, can you tell the fans all the characters that you did from uh, Thundercats? Actually, I, I probably can't because I just don't remember. However, uh, I'll tell you what I do remember. Uh, Tigra, Wily Cat, Monkeyan, the Demolisher, um, the Unicorn Keeper. I was the Unicorn Keeper. I was Bengali. And let's see, who else was I? Uh, they were, oh, Hachiman. How can we forget Hachiman, the samurai warrior, one of my favorite characters. Uh, my recollection, I think it's been confirmed to me, is that uh, Hachiman appeared in about a half a dozen storyline of about a half a dozen episodes. And I had a great time, great time doing that voice. Um, who else can I think of? Anybody else? Uh, not offhand, but there were other guest characters, you know, because uh, each episode generally required uh, some additional voices other than the, the stock characters, and so uh, all of us uh, would audition in the studio to do those extra voices, and occasionally I, I would uh, get the nod and go for it, <laughs> which was part of the, part of the fun uh, of doing the series, yeah. Yeah, so you kind of like all kind of like chipped in if there was a new character for an episode or something. Yeah, it was uh, a friendly competition, I would say, as are, are many of the auditions uh, in the voiceover business, because over the years you, you tend to run into the same people. Um, some new people come, you know, people drop out of the scene, and uh, you are always competing. Uh, for your, for most jobs, unless you happen to just get called for a, a booking, um, but you're typically competing with a lot of the people you know and have known over the years, and and, and that's just the nature of the business. And, uh, and we did you the know. same. <clears throat> so we did the same in the studio for the uh, cartoon. Yeah. The several the the, the male voices, uh, the, the male performers, uh, voice actors uh, would get the script. We would always, you know, everybody would get a script, and sometimes there would be drawings, and sometimes we wouldn't find out about a new character or what the character looked like until we got to the studio to record the episode, and so we would just come up with something on the fly, and who, excuse me, whoever the director. Uh, like best, you know, the the most appropriate voice, uh, they would get the uh, they would get the call, and uh, and record that voice uh, for that episode. Yeah. I think that's if I remember. No, no, the demolisher. I, I think I had ahead of time because I'm not sure I would have come up with that that voice because it was that was actually kind of a uh, a very uh, a kind of abusive voice for the for the. With the vocal folds <laughs> to do, but I, I kind of thought, no, oh, that would, you know, that sounded right to me, and, and I got the, uh, I got the part, uh, and, and I was right. It was very rough uh, on my voice. I think after that day was through, I, I kind of had to stop speaking for the rest of the day. It pretty well shot my voice. Yeah, you probably had to um, gargle on salt water, is what one voice actor once told me after they got done with the character. Uh, well, so I didn't. I didn't typically do that. Uh, sometimes I would get, you know, a uh, nice, uh, warm, hot tea, uh, uh, but rest uh, after after uh, a difficult uh, session. In that way, the best thing is is uh, vocal rest. Give mm -hmm. your voice a chance to recuperate, and it, it mm -hmm. did. Generally, by the the next day, everything was okay. And. Um you know, speaking of their recording sessions and things, can you share some personal memories with the cast members from not only, uh, and I haven't mentioned Silverhawks yet, but not yeah. only from uh, Thundercats, but Silverhawks, and I know you worked on Tiger Sharks and yeah. different yeah. cartoons like that. Right. Um, the uh, So much of it was just about the, the, the joy, <laughs> the fun of of having this job. Uh, not only getting paid well, but going to the studio with these 
uh, incredibly talented people uh, who uh, I admired, uh, who had been in the business a lot longer than I had been, um, and, and just watching them do their thing, uh, and then having the, the pleasure, uh, excuse, me, <coughs> excuse me, the pleasure of uh, being counted an equal uh, in, in that environment. That was, that was just terrific. Uh, but certainly there were episodes where one character or another, or another was featured, and when Mumra was center stage <laughs> for an episode, and the late great uh, Earl Hammond would do his thing, uh, raising the rafters with uh, the, the Mumra's uh, uh, temperament and, and that, that incredible laugh, that evil laugh of his. Uh, it was all to do sometimes to, to keep from spoiling a take by laughing or applauding <laughs> before it was over. Uh, so there were things like that. Uh, and also, uh, at, in those times uh, when we, uh, as I said, auditioned for a new voice, to hear somebody come up with the right voice, you knew it when you heard it, uh, and it, it was just uh, uh, a real treat, a real treat just to, to witness the process. Uh, and as I say, be involved in it, too. Uh, that, was, uh, uh, that was just great. Uh, I, I've spoken about... Um, uh, in the past, I've spoken about what happened with uh, Silverhawks and, and how I got Lieutenant Quicksilver, uh, because that came after we had done uh, a lot of Thundercats episodes. We learned that there was going to be this new series, and uh, you know, being an actor in this, you know, it's what have you done for me lately? Uh, <laughs> always that sense of you know, when, after this job finishes, will I ever work again? Uh, there's a little bit of that going on, and so when we got the first episode and I was at home and reading through the script and thinking about the characters and there was Quicksilver uh, and I thought well you know this is the, the, the central character the leader of the pack the lion uh, kind of of the Silverhawks and I just tried to think about voice and, and how he might sound and just hit upon uh, the voice that he ultimately had and when I first heard it heard myself do it and Sounds a little ridiculous, but there it is. When I first heard that, I thought, this, this sounds right. This sounds like it has possibilities. Uh, so I just worked with it a little bit, and uh, when we went into the studio, and it was my turn to take a, a shot at it, uh, I did as I had uh, planned, and sure enough, it, uh, you know, it, I got the, the, uh, uh, the nod of approval and, you know, the kind of the smiles and the recognition that, right, oh, that, that's the right sound. That's good. Uh, so with that, needless to say, I thought, okay, <laughs> I will work tomorrow, <laughs> and I'll, I'll continue in this environment working with these great people again. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was, that was one of the, uh, I would say, um, uh, most enjoyable moments for me personally yeah, in, the, uh, in the experience. I have, you know, I have probably all told between uh, figures and little, uh, I, I have a pencil topper, I have one or two pencil sharpeners of characters, I probably have a dozen or so things, maybe uh, uh, 15 or 20, you know, some, that's the most. Um, and I, I got them, I think, at some point where the, uh, I must have seen them on sale. At, at one of these toy shop chains, you know, long after the series was uh, uh, off the air. Um, and so I must have just picked these things up thinking, wow, geez, look at that. And, and it's on sale, too. So, oh, sure, I'll get it, I'll get it. And they sit, you know, kind of locked away in a, ca in a cabinet somewhere. And every so often when I talk to someone about this and uh, I'll just, I'll take a look and um, remember. Uh, and, and the other day I took a look at eBay and was surprised at some of the things. First, some of the things didn't seem that much value at all, uh, but one of the things, uh, I, I'm not sure, I, for some reason I think it was uh, a Hachiman um, figure in, you know, in the packaging and all. Uh, I, at least it looked like the asking price was $99. Uh, I have no idea what happened because uh, I, I suppose it could have gone for less or somebody could have for more, I just don't know. Uh, but it was kind of surprising. 
uh, I have to say, I've, I've always been uh, surprised and uh, pleasantly surprised at the, uh, the, the, the broad recognition uh, and recollection and fond recollection of the series. Uh, it's, it's been the source of many pleasant surprises over the years, I have to say. Yeah, I have to, I have to say some of them do go up. <clears throat> I haven't seen too many of them, like at toy shows, too often anymore. When you see the carded stuff, yeah. I um like once in a while I'll get lucky. I think uh, I got Samurai Joe. If you remember him from the uh, series, Samurai I think, Joe. I think no. he only had like one uh, episode, and he was like a big game hunter that uh, yeah. captured many of the. Uh, Thundercats and to the point where there was only Snarf and uh, Lino left. <laughs> okay, I guess, I guess I just don't remember that. You know, there were so many. Uh, I think we did something like 130 episodes. Yeah. And so there were lots of these characters uh, that came and went. Uh -oh. yeah, he um, actually, he, I think he only had one episode, but he was so well liked <laughs> that they actually made a figure of him. Wow, that's great. Yeah. And well, I think I think when I saw that there was Hachiman, you know, a figure uh, like that, I was tickled pink because, as I said, Hachiman, you know, I had had a great time uh, doing yeah. that character. So I was I was thrilled to see <laughs> that he had a figure uh, uh, all his own. <laughs> Is he one of your? Fi would you say he's your favorite character then, or do you have uh, another that's a favorite? Hmm. Good question. Um. I, I, I think uh, in some ways Monkey and was kind of a sentimental favorite to me, um, uh, just because he was such a hapless character, uh, trying to be the baddest of the bad and, and usually, you know, tripping over his shoelaces kind of thing. Um, I, I seem to remember, too, there was an episode where he did get the chance to take over the world, as it were, and it just was a disaster. <laughs> So, uh, kind of a, a, a warm spot in my heart for Monkey. And, <laughs> uh, Tiger, Tiger was kind of more of, you know, the straight arrow superhero adult, you know, kind of character, the reasonable voice of reason most of the time. Um, and, uh, but there were, you know, I, I do remember there were these episodes, a couple of episodes of something like the Cave of Time or the Tunnel of Time, where uh, Tiger aged as he walked into the, this tunnel or this cave. Um, so it's fun to, to kind of play with the character that way. And the other one, another uh, episode, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it involved a character called Silky, I think, uh, 